In this video, we're going to try to explain Boyle's Law. Now, Boyle's Law draws a relationship between pressure and volume. And essentially, as the pressure is increasing, so if your pressure increases, your volume is going to decrease, right? Um, so the initial pressure times the initial volume is going to equal the pressure at a new condition times its new volume. So in this question, I have a volume of 24.6 liters for a balloon at 7.62 atm. So that's the pressure at 24.6, so 7.62 atm, is compressed to a volume of 15.7 liters. So my new volume is 15.7 liters, and it's asking what is the pressure acting on the compressed balloon? So what is P2? Well, P1, V1 equals P2, V2, and I want to solve for P2. So P2 will equal P1, V1 over V2. And I did that by dividing both sides by V2, and these cancel out. So I substitute into my formula, and I get my P1 is 24.6 liters times 7.62 atm. Whoop, I'm starting to lose you on the page here, sorry. And divided by 15.7 atm, or 15.7 liters. Now, before we c go on, this is a compressed balloon. I expect the second pressure to be greater, and the volume for the compressed balloon is smaller. I also want to make sure my units agree. I've got liters and liters and ATMs here. Because both of my um, volumes are in liters, they'll cancel out and leave me a unit in ATM. So I take 24.6 times 7.6. 6.2 divided by 15.7 gives me 11.3 for my P2. So, or pardon me, 11.9 liters, or ATM, sorry, because this is pressure. ATM is my resulting pressure. That pressure is greater than the previous pressure, so that's a indication that it is being compressed. So quickly, when I did this, I organized all the information given to me, wrote my reaction, rearranged it, substituted in, and came up with a final answer. So when I'm uh, seeing students work, I want to see them take out the um, values, including all of the units, rearrange a formula, substitute in with the units, and then come up with a final answer. The other Boyle's Law question I'll ask is, um, we have the same balloon. So it's starting at a volume of 24.6 liters, and its pressure is 7.62 atm, and it's placed in a chamber at a pressure of 350 kilopascals. So my P2 is 350 kilopascals. What is the volume of the balloon when it's in that chamber? So essentially, the, vol the volume of the balloon can change pretty easily, because balloons can be expanded or compressed, but it's at a new pressure. Now, the challenge here is when I do my P1 V1 equals P2 V2, and I'm solving for P2 this time, it'll be V2 equals P1 V1 over V P2. I'm dividing both sides by P2, right? So my P2s cancel out. But the challenge here is going to be that I do not have unit agreement here. So I either need to make this into ATM or this into KPA so that the units will cancel out. I'm going to get rid of the KPA and be left with ATM. So one ATM is 101.3 KPA. If you don't know how to do that, you need to watch the video on con unit con or pressure conversion. So I take 350 times 1 divided by 101.3, and I get 3.46 kPa. So when I substitute in, my pressure, or my pressure 1 is 7.62 atm. My pressure, or my volume 1 is 24.6 liters, and my pressure 2 
is 3.46 kPa. So I take 7.62 times 24.6 divided by 3.46 and it gives me 54.2 liters. So my pressure has gone down and if you look the pressure has gone down about half as much. So half the pressure it makes sense that the volume is going to be twice as big which is essentially what we've got going on here. So that's how you handle Boyle's Law calculations. Um, again, if you do not understand that the units need to cancel each other out, right? Oh, and I made a mistake here. This wasn't KPA, this is ATM. So this was ATM. So those cancelled out, leaves me with liters. By putting in my units, I can see that I made a mistake somewhere. And you need to be able to check to make sure that your units cancel out. If you made a mistake, find it and then go back and fix it.